Guys, we are right now seeing something that is almost exactly mirroring what we saw in 2018, 2019. Guys, history is repeating. This is something you want to pay attention to right now. If you're interested in crypto or if you're holding crypto, going to trade crypto, make sure to stick around. I'm going to talk about the charts. I think that we are going to see a big move for Bitcoin here very, very soon. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about some of the dangers right now as well. So what to be on the lookout for so you do not get wrecked amidst this volatility we're talking about altcoins we're talking about what's going on with the stable coins as well as one of my key reasons why i do believe that bitcoin is going to surpass one hundred thousand dollars and beyond sooner than most people think so make sure to stick around we've got an action-packed episode here today guys so welcome back everybody my name is chris bringing you cryptocurrency videos every day teaching you how to make money in this market if you are new to the channel then make sure to subscribe and activate the bell right now and let's get straight into it actually let's talk first about uh today because you're seeing some altcoins do fantastic here you're seeing ftt even go up 61 percent or 62 percent why is ftt going up maybe because uh it was revealed that uh yeah, uh, the liquidators from FTX had managed to actually recover a significant amount of uh, funds here. So maybe this is just speculation that FTX may even survive the bankruptcy. Uh, we will see, guys, but maybe that is why FTT is going up. But you have CeeLo, uh, Mana, and other coins as well. Okay, so let's talk about this. So what can we see on the four-hourly time frame? And guys, pay attention to this because there's a lot of important things and nuances to pay attention to here. So the first thing is that you are seeing a consolidation right now for Bitcoin, which is absolutely fantastic because just like I've been saying here recently, nothing can go up in a straight line. And for us to have this consolidation, honestly, we've had some drops down to the orange line here at 20,300, but these haven't been that significant. We haven't had a big drop. So this shows strength. Bitcoin is very, very strong right now still. Okay, so we're having this consolidation on the four hourly time frame. This, just like I've been saying here recently, usually leads into another impulsive move up for Bitcoin. So on the balance of probabilities, I would say another pump up to at least 21,700 or 22,400 is definitely likely here. So if we see this breakdown to the downside, you do have, of course, 20,400 you have $20,000 as well. So $20,000, I do believe, is going to be strong support for Bitcoin should we break down here. So pay attention to that, guys. These are some key, actually, uh, moves here happening for Bitcoin because just like we've been, we've been talking about recently, we're seeing uh, you know, a trend shift for Bitcoin. On my charts, which I've been showing you, we have seen a trend shift. We've seen many of the long-term charts break out and actually start to become more bullish. So now on the lower time frames, we're keeping an eye on this as well. Now, one thing I want to show you is the uh, 200 um, day moving average, which I've been talking about yesterday. I showed you the importance of this, how we hit the 200 day moving average right here, got rejected, and now we've been trying to break through it one, two, three times. Okay, so we haven't managed to break through it yet, but when we break through this, what can we expect? Well. I do believe that at the very least, you're going to see a move to the upside, of course, but is it going to be a sustained move? Well, let's look at history here. So I'm just going to prepare you for this again. We struggled with the 200-day moving average right here as well. A couple of times broke out of it, had a little pump just for us to then come down and start consolidating and go down. Okay, so I don't think that you're going to see a downwards move like this, but for us to break through this, have a kind of big pump here or decent pump, and then come down again, this is definitely something that is likely. This is something you saw prior to that as well, okay? You saw it right here, so I pump, consolidation above it, and then we went down. Now, let's look at the times previously, like very, very early, what actually happened. And by the way, guys, this is actually an old uh, Wyckoff accumulation uh, pattern I, this was back in 2021, so hey, raise your hands or leave a comment if you were around and you remember this analysis right here, the Wyckoff accumulation, and um, it didn't play out exactly as uh, as I was anticipating here, um, but nonetheless, the target was actually reached, uh, it just went sideways for a little bit longer, but then it reached this target right here, and that is when it started to go down a little bit before another pump. Now, I digress, let's go back 
to what I was gonna say here. So the 200 week, sorry, the 200 day moving average here. So you saw that pump here also. Um, you saw it struggle a little bit here, and then you saw a big pump, and then you saw consolidation above this level, okay? So now we have two instances where we have had a pump above this. We have had struggles. Every single time we've hit this, we've had struggle. Uh, but one time we've had a massive significant move to the upside, consolidation. Two times we've had small moves to the upside and then consolidation and trend down. Okay, so also right here, you see we struggled with it uh, for a while. We um, struggled, saw a pump came down back to it. So every single time we have broken above this level here recently, or recently since 2020, um, we've had a pump and then consolidation or a little bit of a downwards trend. So yes, be prepared for that, guys. This is what history has been doing. This could definitely be in the cards here next time as well. Now, one thing I want to show you is the 200-day uh, simple moving average. Remember, this is the 200-day EMA, so estimated moving average or exponential. And this is the simple moving average. A little bit different. And this one is actually breaking out right now. And what's interesting here is that since we broke down from this, we have had 381 days exactly. Okay, 381 days since we broke down from the 200-day simple moving average. And now we're finally breaking above it. Now, the last time we broke down from this in the bear market of 2018, we did break down from it here as well. And when we finally broke above it, this was also 386 days, so only a five-day difference, guys. This is too much. This is too much of a coincidence to just be a coincidence, I believe. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to have, you know, a move such as this one, like extremely big to the upside, uh, but you know the drill. I've been showing you my charts. I've been showing you what to anticipate. I do believe that we are going to move into more bullish times, but I do believe that it's not going to be straight line up, so we need to be prepared for that, for the Bitcoin dominance. And guys, before I talk about this, now is the time to get a Bybit account if you do not have one. You're able to get up to $50,000 in price pot right now with this competition. Also, up to $30,000 in deposit bonuses. So make sure to take advantage of this, guys. Sign up to claim these bonuses. And as always, use good risk management. So the Bitcoin dominance still a little bit sideways here with yesterday's candle. But I do believe we're going to come up here to 44%. At that point, I do believe that you could have a little bit of a mini. Now, look, altcoins are still risky, okay? There's still, you know, there's going to be regulatory crackdowns on altcoins. So if you're getting into altcoins... Get in with a plan and have a strategy for how to get out as well, because altcoins are risky. But I do believe that if we hit this level, which I do believe we're going to do at 44%, we could have a little bit of a mini rally. Or if we break through this level at 44% and see some more movements to the upside in the Bitcoin dominance, once it finally, at some point, you know, starts to consolidate, the altcoin rallies are going to be even bigger. So it is time to start paying attention to altcoins at least, just for a quick trade in and out. To have those gains. And if we look at even for this week, you can see that Bitcoin is outperforming altcoins in general. You can see XRP is up 10%, Ethereum 17, uh, BNB is 7.8, AVAX is up uh, 32%. So, I mean, some altcoins are outperforming uh, Bitcoin, um, but um, Bitcoin is mainly outperforming the altcoins right now. That is why the Bitcoin dominance had been going up. But at some point, this is going to stop. Okay, we're going to see an altcoin rally again. It always happens. So we need to be prepared for that. We need to position ourselves for it as well. Now, another thing that is uh, important to keep track of is the funding rates. So this is why it was very good for us to have these kind of uh, drawdowns here as well, going from $21,000 down to $20,000, because this shakes out, you know, people are going irresponsibly long with 100x and so on, and the funding rate's not shooting into the sky. The funding rate is normal right now, a little bit on the high side perhaps, but mainly normal funding rates. This is what we want to see, guys, funding rates being normal and not being exuberant. This gives us more room to the upside. Now, this is an interesting chart as well. So this is the stable coins, USDC and USDT, the main stable coins. And you can see it's kind of in the middle of this chart right here. But when the stable coin 
uh, dominance goes down, of course, it means that crypto is going up. This is why you had November 2021 top right here uh, when the stable coins hit this trend line. You had the spring 2021 top when we hit this trend line right here. And of course, you have the absolute bottoms when the stable coins are at the strongest point. So you do have the September 2022 lows right here. Stable coins were at a high level. So now we're in the middle here. Are we going to trend to the upside? of this channel or to the downside. I do believe in general, over time, this is on the weekly time frame. we're gonna trend towards the bottom of this trend line, meaning Bitcoin, the crypto space in all, uh, overall is going to continue to the upside. Okay, so we're keeping an eye on that, guys. Finally, the reason why I am accumulating Bitcoin every single day here. So this is the supply of Bitcoin visualized. You have a bunch of Bitcoin on exchanges. You have zombie coins, which are not... You know, being transacted. They are not in circulation, essentially. You have coins owned by Satoshi Nakamoto. He's never moved these. Probably not going to move them. You have the Bitcoin Grayscale Trust. Bunch of Bitcoin there. We continue down here. You have the holders and traders. Vast majority of Bitcoin is in the hands of holders and some traders as well. You know, trading back and forth, using that Bitcoin as a tool to trade. That's fantastic. But look at this. This is the supply left to be mined. These are all the Bitcoin. And remember, it's going to take hundreds of years for these Bitcoin to enter into circulation. The majority of Bitcoin that are circulating right now is also the majority of Bitcoin that is going to be in circulation for the, well, the vast majority of time, okay? So these are all the Bitcoin left to be mined, meaning as demand continues to go up, you're going to see, you know, people fight for these Bitcoin. Okay, that's what I got for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys in the next one.